be secured overnight financing rate unchanged at spot zero five percent. Comment from the Fed Harker says after finishing asset purchases taper in March, they can probably expect a 25 basis point rate hike. Welcome traders to this week's live trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Uh, before we get going here, if you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you could type a, a Y into the chat box so that uh, I know we're good to go. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Sammy. Good stuff. Okay, let's, uh, let's get this show on the road. Uh, before we start, just a, a bit of housekeeping here. If you have any questions, um, <laughs> hi, Joseph. Um, if you have any questions uh, during the, the presentation, if you want to drop them into the Q&A or into the chat, um, I won't cover them as I'm going through the charts. What I will do at the end of the session is open up a, a brief Q&A where I'll cover off any questions you might have. Um, with respect to any aspect of trading or a chart maybe that you want me to take a look at that I don't cover in my presentation. Uh, happy to do that at the end of the session. So uh, before we jump into the presentation, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Uh, most pertinent to today's discussion is the fact that the views expressed by me uh, here today are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Um, Noel, uh, Noel's got no sound. Uh, need to log out and back in. Okay, so for those that are here for the first time today, a uh, brief introduction to myself. After I graduated uh, from King's College London, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for uh, technology businesses. So essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets, I had some capital to play with and some time on my hands, and I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck went out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what were going to prove to be some pretty significant losing positions. I eventually gave back all my gains and took a six-figure hit on my personal capital. To say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, uh, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and the hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, 
I have also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down uh, fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical uh, trade setup videos on three to five markets that I'm tracking through the Ticknell uh, TradingView uh, account. I also run uh, Ticknell's rapidly growing eMini Strategy Facebook group, where I post a daily video outlining my pre-market trading plan for the US cash trading session. I give my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 1,800 points of profit since we launched the group uh, last April. The second Ticknell strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The Ticknell Futures uh, Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis I share in-depth insights, analysis and trades. I also live stream during the opening hour of the cash session in New York where traders can essentially look over my shoulder and watch in real time as I dissect the markets and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These live trade sessions also act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets, and most importantly, the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. What I want to do now is, uh, is jump into the charts. Before I do that, I will just quickly post into the, uh, the chat here. For those that are interested in any of those, uh, those trade groups I run, you can access the Facebook group um, just simply by submitting a membership request. Um, and for those who are interested in following the trading view ideas that I post on a daily basis, those videos, uh, we have this um, trading view account, the Ticknell trade ideas, I post daily there, daily videos on, like I say, three to five markets that I'm tracking. And for those that are interested in finding out more about the, uh, the, fu the Telegram Futures Group, um, that does require you to have a funded uh, Ticknell Futures account. Uh, but you can, if you want to direct, mes uh, direct message me through LinkedIn there, there's my profile. Uh, you can follow up with me on that uh, through, uh, through a direct message. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. And now we want to jump into the charts. Today, I'm going to use multi time frames. Uh, on the longer time frame is going to be the daily chart. And uh, what I'm going to do is through the intraday hourly chart, identify some trading opportunities to align with what I perceive to be the daily trend. Now, um, you'll notice that the colors of the candlesticks are, are slightly different to um, those of just the, uh, the standard uh, green for uh, green, meaning a bullish close and red, meaning a bearish close. Uh, mine are, are trends determined. And the trend is based upon a uh, volume weighted average price on the daily chart and on the hourly chart. So um, this just the, the reason I, I have these is just simply to uh, to better define trend and to not uh, not get uh, taken out of trend moves on uh, on the interim reversals. So uh, that's just to explain the color coded nature of the candles. So um, looking first of all here at the S and P five hundred. This is the E-mini futures uh, contract here for the S&P 500. If you're trading the actual spot S&P 500 through, uh, through Ticknell is in terms of the MT4, you need to adjust the, um, the levels. Currently, I think uh, the spread is about seven points, but uh, I, I use the futures uh, for my trading. So what we're tracking here is essentially we've had um, what could possibly be um, considered a uh, corrective move. And the reason why I refer to that is that we had from the prior highs here uh, an ABC pattern, and um, we traded just shy of the 45.70, which um, was the equality objective versus the swing structure. When I'm talking about equality objectives, what I'm talking about are ABC 
uh, in Elliott Wave terms, would be considered a uh, B, C corrections. Now, obviously, we can have more complex corrections. You can do a double or even a triple correction. But the initial objective for any corrective move is going to be the, the equality level. And so that's the one that I'm always looking for to pay attention to. So we have technically completed what can be considered a correction. Um, the move off the lows, off the, the current swing lows, at just ahead of that 40, uh, 45.70, 45.73, also at this stage is corrective in nature insofar as we have this um, reaction high, the initial reaction low. Bear with me here, let me remove that. And use this again. So we have reaction high, reaction low. And you can see there, let's go look at this one. Finally, there we go. Um, we have traded just into what could be considered a, another correction. So if this, if this scenario, if we're going to do a double correction, what we'd anticipate is that we are going to see this type of pattern develop. So we have this, and then we have this, and this, and this, and then we would get another corrective leg to the downside, which um, more often than not will be equal to this leg here. So, and this would be uh, this would be considered a double correction. So we have this pattern, or the X Y Z pattern, if you're uh, if you're an Elliott Wave uh, fanatic. Um, so this is the the potential scenario versus this forty seven forty one high. But what I'm looking at here now on the intraday charts is we have potential triangle scenario, um, and if we can hold support back into uh, 46.97, that's going to be a key level I'm going to be watching today as, uh, as a potential trade zone for me. If we hold this 46.97, it's also projected ascending trend line support versus the, the current uh, swing structure we're in. If we can hold there, get bullish reversal patterns, then I would be looking for a move back up through this 47.41 to take us up into the 78.6% retracement of the entire decline at 47.57.50, then that will become a decision point for the market because what you'll also notice here is that um, versus the last leg of upside that we had, uh, the Santa Claus rally as such, um, we actually held 78.6% retracement to the downside. So it, uh, more often than not in these futures, we will test these 78.6% uh, retracements and then we'll see uh, whether or not um, buyers have the uh, are, have enough appetite to take us through that level because once we get a close through the 78.6 percent retracement that sets up a high probability scenario of testing the 127 extension of that prior swing which would then have us up new all-time highs 4871 so it's gonna be an interesting session today in terms of futures we've got ppi data out um, later today, if we hold this 46, 95 to 97 area, I'm going to be looking for long positions to, uh, to take us up into that 47.57. However, if we fail at the, uh, the 94, that would suggest that this correction is complete. And then we'd be thinking again about that double corrected scenario. And we'd be targeting a move back down into the lows here, 45.21 and 45.09 being the 127 extension. So that's what I'm tracking in terms of the, uh, the futures there. Let's move uh, and take a look at the, uh, the dollar index. So this chart load, you can see the dollar is sitting right at uh, the trend channel support. Now, a bunch of people have, um, have sent me, uh, messaged me um, regarding the, uh, the price action in the dollar and confusion as to why if the Fed are pretty much locked in to raise rates uh, in March now, why we're seeing uh, this dollar weakness. Um, I've got a note here from City that I've shared in the, in my, in the trading groups, but for the purposes of, uh, of you guys, just quickly to, uh, to get a take here from City, um, who obviously see a tremendous amount of, of FX flow and positioning. And you can see they identify three real factors and they're actually seeing a sector rotation. And certainly a lot of uh, investment banks have been calling this year for outperformance in terms of the Euro stocks and, um, and the Euro area. So what does that mean? Well, it means that fund flows um, could be shifting. So if, uh, if US investment managers want to uh, put on positions in Europe, 
that means they're having to convert dollars into euros to uh, to put on those positions or sterling if they want to get exposure in the UK. So you can see here that um, City have highlighted these three factors. So positioning again uh, from a, uh, a CTA perspective remains very long uh, dollars. And um, we have also seen this big rise in oil, which more often than not is a negative for the dollar. And certainly that's what's happening at the moment. And that's leading to some of these um, commodity currencies to outperform in terms of the dollar. So we're going to look more closely at the euro uh, and sterling and these commodity currencies in a minute. But I just wanted to give you a heads up there on the, the institutional take as to why we're seeing uh, why we're seeing a bit of uh, a bit of weakness in terms of the dollar index. City do, however, know that they they are still looking for one for an addition one more high here in terms of the uh, the dollar as we uh, as we get that first rate hike. Whether or not we're going to see that is uh, is up for debate. And certainly from a technical perspective, if we can't hold uh, the support here at ninety four fifty, then uh, then I'm going to be moving to a bearish stance on the dollar and looking for. Um, price to extend to the downside. So if we close below that 94.50, any pullbacks back into this trend line support coming in uh, just ahead of the 95 will uh, will actually be, a, to my mind anyway, a shorting opportunity. And certainly then I'd be looking for a move down to test the yearly pivot 93.80s. And if uh, if we continue to find fresh selling there, I'm looking for a test of this high volume lows 92.80s as the next downside objective. Now, obviously, the, in, the inverse scenario here is that we hold the trend line, we get a bullish reversal, and, um, and then we start to develop for this uh, final move up to make a new high as the Fed uh, potentially make their first move in March. And I'd be looking for a move up towards 97.70s to 98 handle. Um, and then from there, we could see a more meaningful correction. So we really are testing pivotal levels for the dollar at the moment. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how. Uh, how the price action develops in terms of the hourly, the intraday setup at the moment remains bearish. And if we think in terms of uh, the wave structure here, we'd be thinking about uh, another uh, potential leg down here to, to get that break of the um, of the trend line. And then we'd look for um, further corrective moves to find weakness before completing this initial uh, structure to the downside. So once we get that pattern developed, then what I'd be looking for would be a three-way corrective move to basically equal what, uh, what we've got here in terms of uh, this uh, potential one, two. Um, if, we, if we're going to consider this as our wave one, this is our wave two correction, then we've got this internal five-wave structure developing. So then we'd have a more meaningful correction. That would take us back into that 95 area that I just talked about um, if we do get the break, and that will be the, the uh, opportunity on the short side to set up a move down into the yearly pivot 9380s and then beyond there, 9280s being the high volume nodes. So that's what I'm tracking at the moment with the dollar. Now, obviously, the inverse would really require us to, um, to see a, a sharp reversal from the trend line. We're not currently seeing that, and that's the first sign to me or the heads up that we might be seeing a more meaningful change in trend here in terms of the dollar. More often than not, when you get, if you look at these prior tests of the trend line, we get some sharp reactions. Uh, we're not seeing that at the moment in the dollar. So that, uh, that can be the first alert that uh, we're going to see a more sustained uh, change in trend in terms of the dollar index. So if that's the dollar view, let's take a look at the euro. So the euro I was tracking on the daily time frame, this wedge scenario. Um, we have broken out of the, the trend line resistance. Now, what I really want to see is I want to seek to, to get uh, to get really constructive on the euro. I really want to see the, the dollar break its trend line, uh, which we haven't quite done at the moment. So uh, for now, the euro has tested into the equality objective uh, 114.68 seeing a little bit of uh, profit taking. But if we look at the intraday structure here, and we think about the same scenario that, or the inverse to what I've just talked about in terms of the dollar, what I'd anticipate now is that we have um, that's like this. So we're gonna move up into the 115. From there, I'd look for a, uh, a more sustained corrective pullback. Ideally then we get a test of this uh, 114, these prior highs as support, and then we take off to the upside. Um, so you can see that this is the breakout point of this, 
of this ascending triangle pattern that we've been trading in. So any moves back now into this 114, uh, 113.80, I'm going to be watching carefully for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a move up. We want to be thinking about the yearly pivot here, uh, 116.30 as the next logical progression for, uh, for a target in terms of the, the upside uh, for the euro dollar. Now, obviously, any uh, sharp rejection from this zone that gets back inside the trend line uh, tomorrow would actually be a uh, would be a bearish development. Um, less, it's possible, but less probable at this stage is what I would say. So we'll be watching to see if we can get a weekly close through the trend line, and then I think we can uh, we can start to think about um, more significant upside targets for the euro, and certainly one of them would be an equality objective versus this last meaningful correction that we had. So if we overlay that versus our current low, you can see that would actually put us back up into 117.50s. Um, now from there, we could actually do another leg to the downside ironically, because you can see that uh, this could potentially be uh, a wave three low, wave four, and then a wave five to the downside. So again, key decision points ahead. But for now, what we're looking at is the opportunity to engage on the long side. Uh, certainly, if we can get a close, another two-day close through that trend line is pretty uh, is pretty constructive for the bulls, and we'll be looking to uh, to get in long versus this uh, this breakout point on the euro. Uh, let's take a look at sterling. Similar scenario uh, on the daily chart here, you can see we have taken out the trend line. So the immediate target for me now with sterling is going to be 138.39. Uh, uh, from there, I'd anticipate a bit more of a corrective pullback. But then again, we want to be thinking about, uh, about upside extension in terms of sterling. So any pullbacks at this stage back into uh, 136.40s and this, uh, this ascending trend channel support here. Let me just address that. Um, any pullbacks into this zone, I'm going to be watching for bullish reversal patterns. Again, to get in on the long side, and we'll be looking for an extension up into that. 138.40s as the next upside objective. So 200 pips to play for there. If we can get this uh, this pullback to to hold the trend line support, and then we'll be looking to get in on the long side. Looking at uh, let's jump into some of these uh, commodity currencies. Here we've got the dollar CAD. <clears throat> now the dollar CAD. This is also another key uh, trend line test that's uh, that's in play here. Um, you can see we have potential third test. Now, more often than not, these third tests will, will hold. But with this, with this color, uh, the current dollar dynamic, any close through this trend line will again drag on the dollar and, uh, and see these uh, commodity cur currencies advance. So uh, paying very close attention to this level here on the dollar CAD, 124.50. So if we get a close below there, <clears throat> that's a significant bearish development. We then want to be targeting 122.95s and then back into the lows here at 120. So for now, um, we stay bearish. The dollar CAD, uh, let me just draw in what I'm looking at here. So any moves that, uh, one, we take out the trend line and then three wave corrective moves into the uh, trend line resistance here on the intraday, the hourly time frame. So 125.20s to 125.30s would be opportunities on the short side. For uh, to set up an extension to the downside in terms of the dollar cap. At this stage, again, can't really get constructed unless we get a bullish reversal here that takes out this interim descending trend line resistance. And then we could see a more sustained corrective move potentially, or we ascend then up to that, uh, that 132.23 equality objective versus this bigger swing structure. Again, possible, but at this point, given the dollar dynamic, uh, less probable would be my. Uh, my thoughts at this point and certainly when we start now to look if we take a look at the Aussie here so we're seeing some strength in the Aussie uh, I mentioned this uh, last week so we've got a, uh, a trend ch channel here to look at on the intraday time frame so pullbacks now that find support into this high volume node and the projected pitchfork support coming in 7250s uh, should be opportunities on the long side we want to engage there, looking for a move up to ultimately test the trend line resistance coming in at 74.60, 74.70. <clears throat> now, that obviously implies 
of failure of the uh, trend line resist uh, trend line supports. Sorry, in terms of the uh, the dollar CAD. Uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, commodities themselves and start to uh, to lean to the bullish side in terms of uh, commodities. And I'll explain why in a minute. Certainly with the oil move, so you can see on the daily in terms of gold, there's not really much to do here. We're trading in the triangle at the moment, and I'd be waiting for the triangle to uh, to get a retest or a break before doing something in gold, silver, <coughs> similar. Uh, well, we're trading within the wedge at the moment in terms of silver. Uh, if we can get a move through the weekly uh, range resistance here, there would be an opportunity on the long side to play for this move here, where we get a test into the descending trend line resistance. 24.25 is there, and there may be a new low before extending to the upside in terms of silver. But the one that's of most interest to me at the moment in terms of commodities is, uh, is crude oil. <clears throat> so crude is sitting right at this trend line resistance. So what we want to see in terms of crude now is any pullback into uh, this trend line support and these prior highs. So the 80-40 level in crude, this is what I want to pay attention to, because if we can get back in here and we get a bullish reversal pattern from this area, then I will be looking on the long side to play for a break of that trend line resistance here on the daily time frame. So through 83.20s. And then we should break the prior highs at 85, uh, 85.39. And then in terms of upside objectives, what we want to track is, use the FID tool here. We have a 127 extension then up at 91.64. So we're through the 78.6% the retracement, which is really gives uh, conviction on the bullish side. So what we're looking for is that first pullback um, we could, from the current levels, if we look at, the, if we think about it in terms of wave structure, we could have a quite a deep pullback here, which would still be bullish and still give us that extension then up through the, the highs. Let's just uh, measure that versus that pullback there. Um, and then in Elliott wave terms, what we want to think about is five equals one. So the fifth wave equal to the first wave as a minimum objective. So we could pull back in theory here into the 76 level and it would still be a bullish structure versus this, uh, this equality objective and, uh, and set up that move to break the highs. Preferred scenario, like I say, is that on the intraday time frame, we're going to move back into this support zone, 8040s, bullish reversal pattern from there to extend to the upside, initially targeting 8570s in terms of crude. Let's check in with the cryptos here. Bitcoin has, uh, has tested that daily sending trend line support. Can't, uh, can't really get too excited about this until we take out this descending trend line. Uh, once we do, then uh, we may have a more meaningful low in place in terms of, uh, in terms of Bitcoin here. And pullbacks then should, uh, should be opportunities on the long side to at least play for that gap fill up to the 53,700 level. This is obviously the continuous uh, futures contract. Uh, that's why it's got a gap. Obviously, Bitcoin itself doesn't actually uh, have a gap because it trades 24 hours a day. Um, but this is the futures contract, so it has a gap. 53,600 will be the magnet if we can take out the descending trend line resistance. Ether, um, really trapped at this stage in this descending trend line. Whilst, whilst this is uh, still in play, um, I think the, the picture for Ether remains uh, pretty bearish and we can start to think about this uh, trend line support, projected pitchfork support, 2321 uh, from rejections at the 3500 level. So that's going to be a key test for Ether. If we can get through there, then we can start to get constructive again on Ether and start to think about upside objectives. But for now, it's, uh, it looks, looks bearish. Dollar Yen. <coughs> so we have dollar yen breaking its uh its trend line support its internal trend line support here as we get through there the next stop for the dollar yen is actually going to be quite a way down back into this 111.80 ascending trend line support so <clears throat> in terms of the intraday what we want to see is a close through the uh the trend 
line support and the pivot at the moment. So if we can get a close, if we can get through back into 114, and then we want to think about a move that corrects in uh, in equal weight to this last leg here. So we want to see this type of scenario develop. Then we retest the, on the daily, we'd be retesting the trend line from below to act as resistance. And that's going to be where the opportunity on the short side is. And then we would be setting up for a downside extension into um, trend line support coming in 112.30. So, uh, so ample room on the downside. And again, this feeds into that idea of the dollar ultimately failing at its, uh, at its trend line support. So it's really... For me at the moment, it's going to be key to watch how this dollar index uh, responds to the, uh, the trend line test that's underway. And like I say at the moment, we're not really seeing much appetite in terms of, uh, in terms of the bulls. And so I'm starting to think in terms of a breakdown and then playing that first retest of the 95 level from below, I think will be an interesting opportunity. And obviously then that feeds into uh, the FX majors as, uh, as I've discussed. So those are the charts that I'm tracking at the moment and the, uh, the opportunities I see uh, in developing in the, in the coming sessions, really. And so uh, keeping an eye on those, I'll be updating them in the, uh, the Tickmill uh, TradingView account, which I posted the link for in the chat. Uh, so at this point, I'm happy to uh, open up for any questions. Does anyone uh, have a chart they'd like me to take a look at that I haven't covered? You can type it into the chat or the Q&A. Okay, Sterling Swiss to start with. Let's go. <clears throat> okay, so this one is sitting right at this trend line. Have we even tested? Well, we're just shy of the trend line support, uh, trend line resistance there. <clears throat> if we look at the intraday structure, let's zoom out. So we have the trend line support here. Oops. So what I'd be looking for on this one is the quality objective. So we have this leg, this leg, and this leg. So I'll be looking for a move uh, whilst we hold 125.60s as resistance. And let's see this pattern play out and then get in on the long side, certainly thinking about that trend line test. So we have uh, 126.30s. So we've got an entry here potentially at, uh, at this trend line support and this pivot cluster, the equality objective, 124.50s. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there. And, uh, and I think that's a decent opportunity on the long side, their third test of the trend line as well, like that. And, uh, and then we can play for a challenge on this uh, descending trend line resistance, uh, which would actually technically be a fourth test. And so, um, as you know, those fourth tests, uh, the resistance is probably weakened significantly. And so they provide a decent opportunity for a break. And then we'd have that high volume mode, 126.95, 127. So this great risk reward scenario here, nice technical setup. And, um, and yeah, so watch for the bullish reversal pattern at the 124.50s. Uh, sterling yen. This one is, uh, is looking at the moment like, uh, like it could do this ascending, uh, triangle pattern here so if we can hold 156.50s do we have an equality objective there let's just have a look yeah we have the equal, equal legs 156.50s we have the pivot there um, so any move into this zone bullish reversal patterns engage on the long side we might consolidate here at the uh, the trend line resistance third test but ultimately, we'd be looking for a breakup. And um, if we extend, then we can start to think about that 160 there on the upside, which, uh, again, if we think about the wave structure here, we have a potential 
five equals one would put us up there um, quite nicely. And then from there, I'd be anticipating uh, we see a bit more of a sustained corrected move. Um, but you can see the structure there on the daily works nicely. And we have a nice entry here, uh, watching for reversals from 156.50. And Kiwi CAD. So the Kiwi CAD looks, uh, looks to be setting up, let's see. Yeah, so what I'd anticipate here with the Kiwi CAD is the potential for um, trend line here. Where price stalls out at the um, at the seventy eight point six sixty one point eight percent extensions from the uh, this I classify this as a potential double double correction so an X Y Z pattern. Um, but what we could look at is for um, even here on the uh, let's do this one second. And uh, measure this and this and that. So yeah, what I like with this then is um, we probably are going to correct higher here, but ultimately what I'll be looking for will be for uh, the price to stall out in and around uh, these prior lows here. Uh, 86 14s and then a final extension down into the 83 uh, 83 level and then from there I think we could see a more sustained corrective move uh, completing this uh, the equality objectives on, uh, on multiple swings there so um, pullbacks like I say into 86 12 let's draw in what that might look like here so something like, like this would work and then look to engage on the short side. Does that make sense, Amy? Okay, any other questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, an N in the chat box is useful. So I know that uh, we're all on the same page and I've done a reasonable job of explaining what it is I am looking at and where the opportunities are for the week ahead. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm gonna, oh, are you using Heikenashi candles? Um, no, I'm not using Heikenashi. These, uh, these are trend candles as, uh, as defined by the, uh, the volume weighted average price. No problem, Joseph. Okay, like I say, you can follow me on, uh, on the trading view. I'll put the link into the chat and uh, feel free to join me in the, uh, the futures group for that daily trade plan. And uh, I'll look forward to uh, reconvening same time next week. All the best, everyone. Thanks very much. <laughs>